I was only 45 years old. You know, a fit 45 year old doesn't get arthritis. I, never, I didn't know anybody who had arthritis at, at, at such a young age. You know, no one could understand that a child could have arthritis. There's this really uh, entrenched stereotype that it's an old person's disease and it's clearly not. It's like a fire that's burning in their joints. It really can be a life-changing diagnosis. It's an unpredictable condition, it causes pain, it causes fatigue, it causes joint damage and it can affect um, the rest of your body's functioning as well. I wake up feeling really sore and very tired. Fatigue is probably the biggest symptom that I find with, with RA. If, if I have a late night or, or bad sleep, and that's where the fatigue sets in because you might wake up for an hour or two during the night because your hands are painful or your feet are aching. I wake up in pain probably most nights. That during the day affects my work and you're just a bit lethargic all day and, and, it, and it hurts. You'll be in pain for the rest of the day, so so good night's sleep is is certainly a, a big help. When my dad developed rheumatoid arthritis eight years ago, none of us could have predicted the profound impact it would have on him and our family. I certainly cut back my ability to work as efficiently as I previously could. You know, I'm I'm not as productive. Or I can be, but then it catches up with you in a day or two. So I, I could probably go hard for a few days and then it will, will flatten me for a day or two. I work within my limits. I think you, you just adapt to the pain. Throughout my research, I've heard many stories from people living with rheumatoid arthritis and a common theme has emerged. Living with RA brings about a new level of pain and fatigue that people without it just cannot comprehend. It has lots of effects. We need to pay closer attention to the effect on mood, concentration, fatigue. A lot of my patients with active inflammation really struggle with the whole fatigue thing. Um, they're just really tired. They just can't do what they want to do. And then it affects you know, relationships, the ability to self-care, to care for the family. So with RA, one of the features of the disease are things that are called flare-ups, where just out of the blue the disease suddenly becomes really aggressive and really active. It might be for 48 hours, it might be for four weeks, it might be for four months. They are so unpredictable, so you could be feeling really good one day and then the next day you can't get out of bed, you can't comb your hair, you can't get in the shower. I mean, the impact on daily living that these conditions can have is really, can be quite extreme. I live with the expectation of when's the next flare-up going to come, not if, but I think when. Um, I have been lulled into a false sense of security and I'll never go into that state again because I know it's not, um, it's not a true state to live in. I am well controlled, but I do struggle every day. Having lived with rheumatoid arthritis since the early age of six, Wendy is all too familiar with the daily struggles this disease presents. Despite this, she remains surprisingly optimistic in her outlook on life. I don't know how to live my life any other way and, and in one sense, I actually think that's been a benefit because I can't say, well, before I got this disease, I used to, I really feel for people who are older and diagnosed because it just blindsides them and they've gone from being independent and healthy to being very disabled and, and very unwell at times. It was frustrating probably initially because I thought, well, this will be gone in six months. But um, no, sort of eight years later. That's still as fiery as ever, unfortunately. I was hoping it might have given up by now. In fact, these last few years have only highlighted how misunderstood this autoimmune disease is. Despite the 450,000 Australians currently living with rheumatoid arthritis, misconceptions about the disease are rife. For a lot of people it's invisible. For me, because I was diagnosed at such a young age and because there were no effective treatments 
um, probably for the first 15 years of the condition, my joints became quite deformed really quickly and that deformity is quite visible. It's often really hard because, um, you know, you see all these terrible pictures about people with you know, terrible rheumatoid arthritis, hands going left, right and centre. Uh, there's often a range of responses. Sometimes people are just really shocked and just their, their, their brain shuts down. You can see the, the shutters have gone, have closed and the, and the eyes have glazed over, you know, once you tell them rheumatoid arthritis. Um, it's hard. I'm really positive about rheumatoid arthritis um, and treating it. In the last 20 years, we've just had an explosion of um, new treatments. I have so many people that do really well. You know, I tell my patients, rheumatoid arthritis these days, I anticipate normal life, normal fertility, normal occupation. You know, it's something which we can treat and um, sometimes we can even make it go away. So I tell people that these days of rheumatoid arthritis, all those old pictures of people with terrible joints and wheelchairs, you know, I've got some patients like that, but they're the exception these days rather than the rule. And they're often the ones that had the diagnosis 20, 30, 40 years ago when we didn't have good treatments and we didn't know how to use them. My patients often say to me, look, the problem is that I look normal. You know, I look normal, people think I'm normal, but I'm stiff in the mornings, I'm miserable, I can't do this, I can't do that. Um, but they look normal, you know. You say you've got rheumatoid arthritis and, and the, a lot of them don't understand that RA is actually in a totally different box to your osteoarthritis or, or some of the other ones. It's a pain that can be in a different location, it can be a different type of pain, it can be fleeting, it can be chronic and I think it's really challenging for specialists to manage the pain. i got a fairly high pain tolerance. I've, I've had a lot of injuries and um, the RA is up there. So to, the difference is you, you've sprained your ankle, the pain goes away. The RA doesn't go away. Yeah, you, you're dealing with something that's there 24-7. The invisible nature of rheumatoid arthritis has resulted in proportionately smaller amounts of government funding compared with other diseases. Yet the significant economic burden of RA, which rates higher in costs than cancer, mental health and cardiovascular disease, suggests that this lack of attention is something that needs to be addressed. When it comes to research funding, we do so poorly. There is such minimal investment in research funding. It's really a, a very low profile disease, unfortunately. Arthritis Australia does everything in their capacity to raise the awareness of all the different forms of arthritis. There's a hundred different kinds. It's, it's a hard job that they've got. Arthritis is one of the most um, expensive chronic illnesses within our community and yet it's one of the least funded. It's almost like people with arthritis are just expected to get on with it and there's not that recognition. To get a good media campaign or even to get some government recognition is really, really challenging and um, I, I see that as a real source of frustration for people trying to advocate for people like me in the community. From the point of view of people with rheumatoid arthritis, I would really love to see earlier diagnosis and management, better access to specialist care and more affordable access to specialist care because um, the out-of-pocket costs for specialist care are very high in Australia. I hope for the future that we will have that magic cure. I really do. I, I don't know if I'll see it in my lifetime. I, I don't know, but I hope that it will be there eventually. And there are lots of great scientists and doctors working hard to find the cure and to find better treatments. You know, from an advocacy point of view, we try and um, emphasise the impact of these conditions, but people are often not willing to listen. And maybe it's because of the arthritis moniker that comes with some of these conditions. So it is, it is a struggle um, to get the attention that these conditions really deserve. I mean, arthritis and musculoskeletal conditions overall are actually the most expensive conditions in the health system. They cost $12.5 billion, yet there's very little uh, money invested in providing better treatments and in research in particular into these conditions so that we can find a cure for some of them, hopefully, and um, actually improve the treatment so people can 
uh, live as normal a life as possible. We still see people on you know, the, the gold standard treatments who are still quite significantly disabled on a daily basis. I'd love to see that disappear. I'd like to see greater community awareness because that leads to greater funding and greater funding can lead to more dollars to put into research and development around this condition.